I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great, smarter, more aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> like I could. Take on the world. Look, Hoagie, it's a hamster. Just what I need for dissection lab tomorrow. I think I need that for the band, Laverne. You know, like we could bite its head off or whatever. Hands off that hamster. Friend of yours, Bernard? He belongs to Weird Ed Edison, and it looks like he's brought us a note. It's from my old friend, Green Tentacle. He says that Purple Tentacle's mutated into an insane genius. And Dr. Fred's going to kill them both. I thought I was free of Dr. Fred and those crazy Edisons forever. But now, I know that I must go back to the mansion! Okay, we'll spread out commando style. Laverne, you go secure the area behind those double doors. Hoagie, you take care of upstairs reconnaissance. I'll maintain Command HQ here, in the lobby. What are we looking for? We've got to find where Dr. Fred is holding the tentacles. This better not take too long. 
I've got an anatomy final tomorrow. And I've got a show to set up later tonight. If I'm late, I don't get to test the drums. If I know Dr. Fred, he's got the tentacles tied up in his secret lab. Question is, where's his secret lab? Laverne's covering that territory. I'm not leaving this motel until I find those tentacles. Neat! Neat! Hoagie's got that part of the house. Hmm, there's something funny about that clock. Hmm, there's something funny about that clock. Aha! A secret passage. This is all too easy. Laverne, how'd you get upstairs? Am I upstairs? I got lost. Seen any tentacles? What's a tentacle? Oh, just something I whipped up in my spare time. Made good pets, actually. Until one of them tried to take over the world. Had to tie the little buggers up in the basement. Good thing you told us that. Yeah, Bernard wanted us to set them free. Thank God you weren't that stupid. Did you say Bernard? Okay, you're free to go. Thanks, Bernard. Yes, thank you, naive human. Now I can finish taking over the world. <laughs> Wait! Oh, yeah. Now I remember. He's incredibly evil, isn't he? Uh, I'll try to talk him out of it. Well, what possible harm could one insane mutant tentacle do? Leaping lab rats! Dr. Fred! What have you done this time, you meddling milk toast? Now Purple Tentacle is free to use his evil mutant powers to take over the world and enslave all humanity! Whoops! Our only hope now is to turn off my sludge magic machine! and prevent the toxic mutagen from entering the river! Isn't it a little late for that, Doctor? Of course! That's why I'll have to do it! Yesterday! To the time machine! This is all your fault, Bernard. Behold, children! The Chronogen! Doc, can't you just send Bernard? No, you must all go to increase the odds that one of you will make it there alive! Have any people ever been hurt in this thing? Of course not! This is the first time I've ever tried it on people! Bernard, float over here so I can punch you. This must be that Woodstock place Mom and Dad are always talking about. What could it all mean? I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Die. We may not live to see yesterday. I'm sure Dr. Fred wouldn't have done this if it weren't safe. After all, he is a doctor. It works! I can't believe it! And they said Imitation Diamond wasn't good enough. Uh-oh.
Cheap mail order jewels. What happened to Hokey and Laverne? I knew I should have bought a real diamond. Are they alive? My dials say that the larger specimen landed 200 years in the past, and the other is stuck 200 years in the future. Well, hurry up and bring them back. I will, as soon as I get a new diamond. Then all your buddies have to do is plug in their respective chronogons and... Plug them in? Where is Hoagie going to find an electrical outlet 200 years in the past? Yes, well, he'll be needing my patented super battery then, won't he? Now, where did I put those patented super battery plans of mine? Plans? How are we going to get Hoagie plans? Don't worry me with details, boy. Just help me find the plans. They're in this house somewhere. Now what am I going to do? I think I made myself perfectly clear. Step one, find plans. Step two, save world. Step three, get out of my house. Let's get cracking. I'm surprised I ever got out of there alive. It can't do anything without a new diamond. It's maybe I put them upstairs. That's got to be it. Upstairs. There, it's off. But it's too late now. Warning! Output from this device is highly toxic and may cause tyrannical delusions if ingested. It looks like a generator driven by a treadmill. It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only 0.01 seconds. Wow! It's Dr. Fred's design for a super battery. It's capable of storing up to one gigavolt with a charging time of only... I've got the plans! Quick, we have to flush them to Hoagie. How did you get over there? My ingenious super battery design, please. You really flushed them? Yes! Down the toilet? No, through time! Using the highly sophisticated time flux hydraulic vortex chamber I've installed in each chronogen, you can flush small inanimate objects to each other through time! Flush small inanimate objects to each other through time. Hello? Dr. Fred, can you hear me? Drat. Did you hear something? No. Let's see if what's-his-name catches on. Oh, great. I'm stuck in colonial times, tentacles are taking over the world, and now the toilet's backing up. Okay, come over here. It's your old pal, Dr. Fred. Dr. Fred? How'd you get in there? I want you to pick up those plans you see in the chronogen, Hoagie. Bring them to Red Edison. He's my great, 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 great grandfather. He'll know what to do. You need the plans to make a super battery so you can plug in your chronogen. Okay, if you say so, Bernard. Good boy. 
Does he have any experience with electronics? Um, well, I once saw him take 3,000 volts directly through his head without batting an eye. Didn't he pass out? Well, he was already passed out when it happened. Time for me to save the world, I guess. Grody. Grody. Ye oldy outhouses. Mmm, kumquats. It's totally covered with crud. What's up? Don't feel like talking, huh? Vow of silence or something, probably, right? Well, that's cool. I have something for Red Edison. Do you know where I could find him? Great hat, man. I dig the three-corner idea. It's like the pyramids, you know? My friend Eddie told me the pyramids are built by aliens. As if. Well, nice talking to you, dude. Hey. What is it? What are you doing? I'm inventing you, simpleton. What's it look like I'm doing? What are you inventing? It's a new size independent fastening mechanism based on circular geometry. I know an inventor who looks a bit like you. Well, it's not one of my sons, that's for sure. It appears that I, Red Edison, foremost genius of my day, am to be the last in a long line of gifted inventors. My nearly indistinguishable sons have decided that they want to be artists. I think it was Jed's idea. Or is it Ned? Ah, well, the left-handed one at any rate. Must be some sort of bad blood on their mother's side. Well, see you later. You might if you cut that hair a bit shorter. Hmm, super battery, eh? Brilliant design. Sometimes I amaze myself. Now all I need is oil, vinegar, and some gold. It looks more like a raincoat than a lab coat. Hey! Only employees are allowed to use that lab coat. Say, that's a left-handed hammer, you know. I invented it myself. It was for my ungrateful slob of a left-handed son. Oh, well. Say, 
Soon all the power of the heavens will be mine! Oh, mine! If only we had some nasty weather! Yo. Hello. What's up, you cold? Cold? I'm freezing. Why don't you build a fire? Well, I keep asking Jefferson to build a fire, but he won't. Says he needs the log for posterity and won't part with it. He's going to give the log to starving children? I don't get any respect around here. Why, I bet if George I spent the winter in Valley Forge, Washington was cold, we'd get some heat in here. What are you guys doing in here? We're writing a... a, a, a writing the... A, We're drafting a constitution for the United States. Don't say draft, you'll only make me colder. Wimp. Why don't you have some hot coffee? Oh, I can't stand coffee. It makes me irritable and want to bang my head against the walls. Have you tried decaffeinated coffee? I'm talking about decaf. Shouldn't you guys be working instead of just sitting there? Writer's block. We can't think of any amendments or anything, so we put a suggestion box over there. I don't suppose you have any br brilliant ideas? What about free sandwiches for all roadies? No, there's no such thing as... Don't say it, dude. I've heard it before. How come you sign your name so big? Astigmatism. You mean you have, like, a childhood complex? All right. The, the, the truth is that a friend once told me that women go crazy over guys with a big signature. Awesome blanket there, dude. Thank you. It was given to me by my dear old colorblind Aunt Hattie. Well, I gotta go, dude. Hey, Tall, Dark, and Spiffy. My name's Hoagie. Well, how quaint. I am, of course, Thomas Jefferson, noted scholar, musician, horseman, student of the sciences, member of the bar. Oh, sure, I've heard of you, dude. What's in the can, Tommy? Thomas, my name is Thomas, and this, my chubby friend, is a time capsule. Filled with remembrances of our time to be revealed 400 years hence. So, how's the time capsule going? I'm sorry to say that except for my log, we haven't got a thing. Dude, is that like THE Constitution? Right now, it's just a constitution, I'm afraid. We hit a slight creative block right after the preamble. That's why we put up a suggestion box over there. Could you start a fire, please? I'd love to oblige you, young man, but I can't. This is the only log, and I'm saving it for posterity. How can you let Hancock suffer like that? A 
real man is warmed by the fires of his spirit. You should listen to Washington relate his experiences at Valley Forge and take heed. Has anyone ever told you you're a very snappy dresser? Why, yes. I studied at Virginia Coat and Technical, where I majored in color theory. I was captain of the varsity cravat team. Those are impressive credentials, Tom. Thomas! Dude, I loved your work on the Declaration of Independence. Ah, thank you. What was your favorite part? I like the part about prudence. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should... Yeah, there's just one thing, though. Yes? Who's Prudence? Never mind. Well, later, dude. What? What's going to happen later? They don't seem to have gotten too far. Stolen from the desk of George Washington. Excuse me. Yes? What are you looking at out there? The future of our nation. That young couple by the tree? No, no. I was just admiring my reflection in the window. Striking, aren't I? Whoa, you're like George Washington. Very much like him, according to my wife, Mrs. Washington. My name's Hoagie. Like the sandwich? How quaint. Weren't you president or something? Yes, I expect to be chosen president unanimously. I'm very well connected. Do you think I should be the ecology president or the education president? I'm a big fan of education. Really? How surprising. Is it true about you and the cherry tree? Oh, yes, it's quite true. Why, I've cut down acres of cherry trees in my day. Would you give me a demonstration? I don't see why I should. Cold enough for you? Cold? Why, you don't know the meaning of the word. I spent a winter at Valley Forge. Now that was cold. Why, my spit would freeze before it hit the ground. Cool. Extremely. The Constitutional Convention invites your comments, critiques, amendments to the Constitution. Sometimes I like to eat it raw. Mmm, salad oil. It's empty. I hope this wasn't used in the outhouses. Thank you.
I guess this is George Washington's bed. I guess this is George Washington's bed. Here I am, don't get your curls in an uproar. Excuse me, Mr. Washington. Boy, what a mess. The late Max Addicts. His petard runneth over. A lamentable fate for such a patriotic dude. I told you guys I'll get to the flag next. I'm working as fast as I can. Hey, chill. Take your time. Don't tell me you've got another design change for the flag. I've got another design change for the flag. I knew it. What's the current brainstorm from our fickle founding fathers? Could it have a chrome-plated bald eagle robot on it? Oh, what the heck. At this point, I'd do anything just to have it over with. Put the pattern on the table and I'll look at it when I'm done with this job. Stars and stripes, dull, dull, dull. Hey, don't criticize unless you got a better idea. Looks comfortable. The guys downstairs say they want a big family crest, and in the four corners they want a keg, some babes, a guitar, and some drumsticks. And underneath it all put, America rocks. Just put the plans on the table and I'll get to it. I don't quite see how it can fly. Hey, what's that on the plans? It looks like a secret backwards message. Oh, it's just a coffee stain. Looks like he spent a lot of time in there. Chateau de Chipo, 1775. Uh, hi, horsey. Oh, hi, yourself. Wow, you can talk. Wow, so can you. What a coincidence. I didn't think horses could talk. Maybe they just never had anything to say to you. Ever think of that? You mean horses have been snubbing me my whole life? Well, if you want to put it that way. Is this some kind of a trick? I don't do magic, I'm just a horse. Nice teeth. Thanks. I paid quite a bit for them. Did I mention how great your teeth look? Thanks again. What's a nice horse like you doing in a place like this? Hey, I live here. What are you doing here? I'm trying to get back to the future and save the world. The future, huh? And I thought that Franklin guy was off his nut. Well, I gotta go. See you later. Question is, which one's stuffed and which one's the real McCoy? 
I assure you that we are both real, but we are neither one of us McCoys. We are Edisons, Ned and Jed. Who's who? Does it really matter? Even our dear father can't tell us apart. He only knows that one of us is left-handed while the other is right, but that neither of us are following in his tiny scientific footsteps. <laughs> Hold still, Jed! So, I'm almost too frightened to ask, are you the marble delivery man? Or the model? I'm the model. Should I take my clothes off now? No. No, you most definitely should not. We couldn't get your body shape right anyway, unless we cemented two slabs of marble together. But then your statue would have a big seam in it. That's okay. It would have one anyway. Look, don't call us. We'll call you. Dang. I'm no marble delivery man, but rock is my life. <laughs> I'm sure that's terribly amusing. Where you're from. Where exactly did you come from? The future. Kind of spooky sounding, ain't it? Ooh, the future. I'm from the future. Look out. Gosh, it would be so nice if you weren't here anymore. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. Wow, doesn't even blink. Please do not perturb my model. Sorry, hope I haven't jostled you. Too late. the muse that once guided my hand with such care. Must inspiration be so transitory? Must art be so cruel? I'm a failure. Don't say that, Ned. Father was right. We Edisons are made to be scientists, not artists. Dear brother, we must be strong in these times of creative adversity. Why don't you let me take over for a while? I'll clean this rubble up and start over. You relax. Have a cappuccino. I'm glad we switched places. I think you're coming out quite well. Fathers are driving me nuts. Flag design changes every five minutes. Well, as soon as I'm done with this, I'm making them a flag, ready or not. All right, paint.
What a pretty pussycat. Very Spartan. Very Spartan. Very Spartan. Sounds like the cats caught a moose up there. Bitchin'. Cats dig these. Thank you. This is exactly the sort of thing I need for the time capsule. I'll bury it tonight and it won't be seen for hundreds of years. Future generations are in your debt. Whoa. Bitchin. It's closed. <laughs> You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. The water's all sudsy now. Dum de dum. Looks like a big storm. See, this is why I never wash my car. Hey, Ben. What do you want? Where are you going? What about your experiment? Even science sometimes gets cold on account of rain, my boy. But how are you ever going to get lightning if you're not going to stand out in a storm? To be frank, which I am, I don't know. The science of electrodynamics, much like your mind apparently, is still in a state of relative infancy. Back to the drawing board, I say! What a genius. Okay, I flushed it.
Excuse me. Yes? I've been thinking about what you said about cherry trees. Pondering the great truths, eh? Well? I bet you've lost it. You couldn't cut down a tree to save your grandmother. Lost it, have I? Why, I'd show you a thing or two if there were a cherry tree nearby. But as you can see, there... Oh, well, what do you know? There is a cherry tree out there. Well, let's go chop the sucker down. I said come down from there at once! Try to understand. I'm stuck in this... Voila! You're quite a man. Yes, I know. Get me out of here! I haven't done anything! Well, you must have done something or you wouldn't be here now, would you? You'd be out in the lobby with your tentacle owner getting dressed up for the human show. Owner? No one owns me! Gosh, no owner, you say? Well, don't worry about it. I'm sure someone will come adopt you before we have to put you to sleep. Damn that, Dr. Fred. Hey, she knows the Edison family motto. Dr. Fred, is that you? What? You're nuts. There hasn't been a Fred in the Edison family for 200 years. The last Fred was such a shame to the whole family, not to mention the whole human race. Well, who are you then? I'm Zed Edison. That's my wife, Zedna, and my son, Ved. Huh. Huh. Nice to meet you. Where am I? You're in the ancestral home of the once proud Edison family. We were once the masters of this house, just as humans were once the masters of Earth. Now, we are the servants, the pets. And not very good at either one, I might add. Oh, get bent, you overdressed nightcrawler. How do I get out of here? If I knew that, do you think I'd be here? What's this about a human show? It's a degrading farce. That's what it is. These slimy tentacles put humans in humiliating little costumes, do sickening things to their hair, and then force them to parade their ridiculous talents in front of unqualified judges who are paid off weeks in advance. Didn't get in, eh? They said macrame wasn't a talent. Pointy-headed goons. I heard that. I'm tired of talking now. It's been a long day, and I'm only... human. I think they're both cheating. I think they're both cheating. Best not bother them, they're busy cheating. You who, Mr. Tentacle Guy? What? Get me out of here! This is a violation of my rights. Rights? You're a human, you don't have any rights. Ooh, I don't feel so good. I think I'm going to <laughs> throw up all over. Uh-oh. Time to visit Dr. Tentacle. Well, well, what have we here? 
I feel pukey. Indeed. All right, now hold still. Are you gonna use your scalpel? No, of course not. Darn. Do you want to use mine? Uh, no. Hmm. What? Hmm. What? What? Just as I suspected. What? There's nothing wrong with you, human. What a letdown. Well, I'm late for the show. I'll send your keeper back for you. Oh. Sit. Stay. Good boy. I still don't understand how they can eat through a sucker. They've got the spleen mixed up with the liver. Licensed to treat tentacles for the betterment of the tentacle race. Licensed to euthanize humans for the betterment of the tentacle race. Hold it! Humans aren't allowed to roam free here. I'm taking you back to the kennel. I wish I had some sort of tentacle disguise. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. What? I have to go to the bathroom. Ha, that's a good one. Imagine a human using a bathroom. Come on, let's take a walk. Okay, human, do your business. I can see Dr. Fred's old lab, and his generator is still there. Gee, I could really use that power. But I'll never get through this window. There's something in the corner, John. So as soon as Hoagie gets that battery working, we're set. I'm afraid not. We still need a diamond for the main unit. And your friend in the future needs power too, if she's still alive. Alive? There's something in there.
Ahem. The LALR compiler is constructed by the following method. First, develop a rigorous elective grammar. If the elements have NP completeness, the crunchy factor can be ignored. Blah, 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 blah. Whoa. I'll use the chronojohn. I'd rather not. Hey, Dr. Fred! We have to do something! What do you suggest, college boy? No diamond for the central unit, no power for the chronojohns! A mutant monster of my own creation, roaming the countryside, taking over the world! It's a dark day for mad science! Why can't we just fix the time machine? It needs a whole new diamond! Now where am I going to get the money? Bake sale? Do you realize how much a diamond costs? Two months of the groom's salary? Two million dollars! So, you've got money, don't you? Well, I didn't get all the money I expected from that TV show about us. We had to rent out our mansion as a hotel just to make ends meet. Uh. If only I had signed that contract in time. What contract? Well, after that incident when I was possessed by a meteor from outer space, somebody decided to make a show about us. But they didn't pay us anything. All we got was a cut of the video game. Wow, that thing made millions. Yes, I forgot to sign the royalty contract in time, though. I still have it in my safe upstairs. Let's go get the contract out of the safe and sign it. I forgot the combination. But that's... That's so stupid, Dr. Fred. I know. It gives my enormous brain nightmares. Every night I dream about opening the safe, but I find something horrible inside and slam it shut. Over and over again, night after night. Is that why you drink so much coffee? I haven't slept in two years. You're going to get really chafed hands doing that. Sorry, coffee jitters. Maybe you should switch to decaf. No, then I'd fall asleep and... the dreams would come. How's the mad scientist biz? Not too lucrative lately. We're living mostly on the income from renting out our mansion. That and Edna's tips from her exotic dancing. Well, gotta go save the world. Good luck! It looks broken. But there's something in the coin return.
Looks like a stand for tourist info and ads for local merchants. Help wanted, lab assistant. Hard-working drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma not required. Hey, Ted. Talkative as ever, eh, Ted? Boy, I haven't seen you since I was here five years ago. You haven't changed a whole lot. You know, I bet you'd really like my friend Hoagie. He's a roadie for a heavy metal band. Well, I wish I had as little on my mind as you do. Purple tentacles probably taking over the planet by now. We've got to go back in time to shut off the sludge machine. Well, I'd best be on about saving the world. It's closed. Hi! Don't sneak up on me like that. What are you up to? Uh, I uh, locked my keys in the car. I don't see your keys in the car. Uh, actually I lost them somewhere. If you're locked out, why break into the trunk? I uh, have a spare set of keys in there. Nice crowbar. Thanks. Don't even think about asking to use it. I need it. See you later. Yeah. It's from George's Hardware. George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. I've never gotten over my childhood fear of Uzo. The voice of Uzo in a box. Hey boy, you missed the party! You and the clown were having a party? No, no, last night! at the Novelty Good Salesman's Convention. I tell you, we Novelty Good Salesmen know how to have a good time. Has anyone ever told you you look like Don Corleone? That's strange. My wife says I look like Charles de Gaulle. So, want a cigar? Sure, lay one of those Havanan babies on me. I 
was gonna blow your head off there, didn't you? Well, you were right! You shouldn't smoke, it's a bad habit. That cracks me up every time. Looks like they all escaped. Come on, I won't hurt you. Hmm, brown water. I think I could lubricate my car with this stuff. Who knows what surprises await inside? Sleek design, sturdy construction, attractive housing. All in all, a fine phone. Looks like Dr. Fred wearing a powdered wig. Handsome in a way, but I'm glad he eventually accepted his hair loss. I don't really want it. Looks like Dr. Fred wearing a powdered wig. Handsome in a way, but I'm glad he eventually accepted his hair loss. The safe is closed. Gee, Dr. Fred doesn't have a penny. Wow, it's from my favorite movie. This beautiful 4,000 carat diamond can be yours today with a special rock bottom introductory price of $2 million. The number to call is 1-800-STAR-WARS. Don't miss this amazing once in a lifetime opportunity. Ahem. Late night? I'm trying to save the world from a nasty tentacle. Nice room you've got here. It reminds me of the greeting card store I used to work at. I had an uncle who snored as loud as you do. He lived in California until he was declared an earthquake hazard. 
Well, thanks. You've been really helpful. There's a whole lot of keys on here. It's useless. No one will ever be interested in my design. So I'm ending my novelty inventing career right here in this tacky motel. How appropriate. <sighs> I can't even do this right. Hi, my name's Bernard. What's yours? Dwayne. Isn't that depressing? Gee, you look depressed. What clued you in, Brainiac? The stooped shoulders and long face? I'm having a crisis here, a warehouse of anguish. I'm a novelty goods designer by trade. I've come up with some fabulous ideas. The exploding lollipop, itching powder gum, and reverse 3D glasses, to name a few. The problem is, no one likes my designs. I send them all over the world and no one responds. I just wish someone would say they liked one just once. Oh, woe is me. I like your design ideas. Well, I didn't mean you. Maybe I can help cheer you up? Oh, I can hardly wait. Why don't you try whistling a happy tune? I invented a whistle that turned your lips green. Nobody liked it. Ugh. Maybe some calisthenics would help. Last time I tried calisthenics, I ruptured my spleen. Ugh. Let's discuss philosophy. Okay, here's my philosophy. Life is completely pointless, especially mine. Nietzsche had some interesting ideas along those lines. Oh, who cares? Philosophers are all failures like me who couldn't make it in a real profession. Nice music they pipe in here, huh? It's from the Elevated Classics series. It seems like this one tune has been on all day. I've never been so depressed in my life. Uh, never mind. Hey, there's a letter here for you. For me? <laughs> Probably another rejection slip. Oh, well. You're brilliant. What a novel design. Come to Baltimore at once. When you pull the trigger, a humorous flag is propelled out of the barrel on a stick and unfurls. When you pull the trigger, a humorous flag is propelled out of the barrel on a stick and unfurls. Green! Bernard! What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's going to go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? What do you suppose Purple's up to now? 
Well, he wants to take over the world, so I figure he's up to something devious. Conducting cryogenic experiments on small animals? I wouldn't doubt it, but I was thinking more along the lines of politics. Want to help me save the world? I'm afraid to leave the room. In fact, I don't think I can even move from this spot. Purple scares the daylights out of me. How's your new band doing? Green tea and the sushi platter? We're doing great! We've decided to really capitalize on our strongest quality as a band. Intoxicating three-part vocal harmony? Volume, man! Volume! We have a chance to win a Grimy Award as the loudest new band. We're pulling out all the stops. Weren't you looking for a new guitarist a while back? Yes, but we decided to go with a guy who plays power tools instead. We can generate a lot more sound that way. Are you working on an album? Yeah, we're doing a CD called Rap on the Forehead. I've got a few tracks hooked up through the stereo if you want to hear them. Have you gotten any airplay? No, we're a little too experimental for most radio stations, but we have a huge following in the club scene. That's great. Yeah. Why the litter box? Have you got a cat? Don't ask. How does a tentacle sit in a beanbag chair? Oh, that part's easy. It's getting back out of it is hard. Can you actually use that bowling ball? No, Purple brought that in here after he grew arms. He got really discouraged, though, because he doesn't have fingers. Well, see you later, Green. Yeah! Good luck in saving the world, B-Man! Hoagie would really love these. Wow! This is loud! Whew. Neat! Hey, aren't you Weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Benulli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank. Hmm, nope, doesn't ring a bell but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then that I'm blocking out. So you gave up the crazy military commando thing? I'm much better now. I don't have those... 
those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. That's quite a nice collection. Can I have it? No. I mean, uh, no. They mean a lot to me. Sometimes I think they're the only friends I've got. Nice hamster. Does he do tricks? No, he just sits there. I used to have a really smart hamster, but... something... happened to him. What happened to the old hamster? I... I don't remember. When I try, all I can think of is a flash of light and this horrible sound. What was the horrible sound? It was sort of like, ding. Oh God, I hear it in my dreams till this day. That hamster really should get some exercise. Well, Dad puts him to work down in the basement sometimes, but then he starts sweating, and then he gets wet, and then he gets cold, and then he refuses to work. Your dad or the hamster? Are you making fun of me? No, I... I get upset when people make fun of me. I just meant... Oh, it makes me so mad. I just want to... Relax. I want to relax. I'll be okay if I just focus on my stamps. Are all your hobbies this fascinating? I don't have any other hobbies. These stamps are my whole life. If anything were ever to happen to them... How are the folks? Well, Dad's in the basement doing an experiment. Mom's in the next room spying on a honeymoon. Ted's in the front yard. Holding up a bowl of lard? Well, it's a birdbath, actually, but it rhymes better your way. Well, hope I didn't get you too excited. Bye! Peace be with you. He's reading the Wall Street Journal. Hey, want to see a neat trick? Sure. Neat, huh? Uh... <gasps> my Pony Express stamps. You ruined my Pony Express stamps. Not to mention five years of therapy. Get out of my room. Jeez, what a grump. He should really try to find some outlet for those... <laughs> ...negative feelings. Get out of here. Hey, you fixed it. I guess I can forgive you now. Sometimes I do stupid stuff and I don't even know why. As if my body were being controlled by some demented, sadistic puppet master. Well, we all feel that way sometimes. Creepy. Must be an Edison. It's signed, Edna, thanks for giving me the fever. It looks like a physics professor I knew in the second grade. Ooh, baby, what a man. You ain't kidding, precious. 
Boy, she looks even worse than she did five years ago. I see a large pulsating lump with blue stripes on it. Excuse me. What is it? I'm rather... Say, aren't you Bernard Bernoulli? Yes, that's right. I knew it! You broke into our mansion a few years ago to save your little friend. What did you come for this time? I'm trying to keep a tentacle from conquering the world. Really? How nice! How's Dr. Fred doing? Well, he's still upset about the family financial situation, seeing that it's his fault and all. But he seems a lot better now that he stopped sleepwalking. How did he wreck the family finances? Well, we should have made millions on the computer game they made about us. But the resident genius locked the contract in the safe in his office and forgot the combination. What's wrong with sleepwalking? Ordinarily nothing. But when Fred sleepwalks, he remembers the combination to the safe. I'd find him in the office, opening it, screaming like a cat in the oven, and slamming it again. Something about what's in there really scares him. Unfortunately, I was never able to catch the combination since he works it so fast. How did he manage to stop sleepwalking? He stopped sleeping. Fred drinks a lot of coffee. Me, I only drink decaf. I was just admiring your statue. Thank you. It's been in the Edison family since colonial times. One of Fred's ancestors carved it. This is quite an array of gadgetry you have here. Yes, it's the best surveillance system in the state. Is that a Plexus 7000 VCR? It sure is. It's got a dual tape speed motor with cobalt casing. Don't touch it. Are those xenophobe crystal matrix monitors? They sure are. They're so clear you can see the fleas on the bedroom wall. Don't touch! Do you think I could uh, play with these a bit? Absolutely not! I'll let you get back to what you are doing. Come back any time, you big hunk! <laughs> Well, you know what they say. If you want to save the world, you gotta push a few old ladies down the stairs. Hey, isn't that Albert Einstein? Huh? I don't see anything. Oh, never mind. Hi there. What can I do for you, kid? So where is everybody? 
The really big bash was last night. I guess they're all sleeping it off. So, want another cigar? Okay, but only if you promise not to light it this time. Would I do a thing like that? I don't get it! Get lost, kid! Maybe I got a little carried away. I think it's fake. I think it's fake. Here, perhaps these are your keys. Where? Gimme. Hey, thanks, pal. Keep the crowbar. Thank you, masked man. Drat. It must be one of these. Drat. Spearmint, my favorite. I'm sorry to do this to you, little fella, but it's for the future of the whole planet. Now there's a heavy sleeper. Ew, it's soaking wet. I figure this is about $876,600 worth of quarters. 1968? 
thanks. I needed a little pick-me-up. Must open safe. Must sign contract. Must provide for family. He almost took my hand off with the door. There's a contract in it. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. We'd like to go over some of your records with you. Upstairs. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. The tape's at the end. Dr. Fred Edison, Internal Revenue, come with us. Is that a W390B frivolous spending report? No, it's another 561AB negative attention statement. Ah, uh, hey, you can't go in there. What did you say your wife's name was again? What is it? Are you guys brothers? At the IRS, we're all brothers. What have you done with Dr. Fred? We've got him safely locked in the next room while we go over his books. No, you can't go in and see him. And don't even think about staging some kind of rescue. Who's your tailor? Very funny. 
I'll just be moseying along. Keep your nose clean, kid. Good thing we've got Dr. Fred under wraps in the next room, huh? All that red tape ought to keep him busy. Did you say you have a PP-41 facilities paraphernalia declaration over there? Nope. What did you say your wife's name was again? Sandy. Oh yeah. Say, what's the filing date for a BFD-206ZZ insufficient credit applications form? You have until midnight on the 12th working day past the first full moon after the end. Let's see, it's 101-99957. The party of the first part shall hereby be known as a crazed maniacal genius. He's all wrapped in red tape. Oh. Hey. Who's this, Doc? Relative? Well, I'm sure we can order him next. This isn't a party. Mr. Tentacle Guy. It's about time. 
Yoo-hoo, Mr. Tentacle Guy. What? Ooh, I don't feel so good. Again? Hi, I'm La... Ooh-wee, you are one ugly human. Excuse me? Man, I'm not kidding. You are just about the homeliest homo sapien I've ever seen. Are you trying to tell me something? Yeah, you're a real wolf. I mean, your hair alone is gonna give me nightmares. Not to mention your teeth, your clothes, your one eye that's bigger than the other. Gee, how much worse could I get? Not much, unless there were two of you. I guess I'd better just go shoot myself then. Oh, you don't have to do that. We have staff here that can do that for you. The doctor monitoring the human show, in fact, is a specialist in the field. Human show? Hot dang, sign me up! Sorry, humans can't sign themselves up, no matter how ugly they are. Go ask your owner to sign you up. Ask him to sign you up for a haircut while they're at it. One size fits all. Hello, I'm a tentacle. I'd like to enter my insignificant human in the show. Oh my, yes, yes, of course. Take these tags and put them on your human and have them wait on the bench in the lobby. Entrance will be judged in three categories. Best smile, best hair, and best laugh. Thank you, fellow tentacle. Unlike humans, you have been very useful. Oh, uh, thank you. Believe me, it was my pleasure. Now all I need is a human. Yowza! That was one good looking tentacle. Hi, my name's Laverne. I'm a sophomore. My name's Harold. I'm a thoroughbred. That's quite a tutu you've got there. Thank you. My owner paid quite a lot of money for it. My owner buys me anything I want. Where is your owner? He's not here right now. But he would be if he in any way possibly could. His bus broke down in Pittsburgh, so he's stuck there with the other owners. This is the first show I've ever done. Alone. Is your hair naturally blue? 
Natural? How gosh! This took several very expensive sessions at a posh grooming salon. I've got the air competition in the bag. What are you, uh, guys waiting for? We're all waiting for the human show to begin, of course. If you have a human you want to enter, you'd better get it down here. But then again, why bother? My owner says I'm going to win. I'm the most beautiful human there is. Well then, good luck. Who needs luck when you've got beauty? Hi, I'm Laverne. Laverne, eh? Curious name for a tentacle, I must say. Are you here for the show? What show? Why, the human show, of course. It's the big event of the day. If you own a human, you might want to consider entering. There are some jolly good prizes to be won. Why, the grand prize is a dinner for two at Club Tentacle. Nice clock. Yes, it's a valuable antique. I'd like to show it to you, but I'm presently charged with the task of guarding it. No one will get near it while I'm here. Couldn't I please touch the clock? Sorry, no. No one touches the clock while I'm on duty. Aren't you curious about what's inside the clock? Not really. Guarding it is more or less the same no matter what's inside. Has anyone ever escaped from this place? Some try once in a while, but I always fetch them back. That's my primary duty here, and I take it very seriously. I always get my man, no matter how long it takes. Why, I once trailed a renegade human for six days. He led me clear through the hills and up to the top of those mountains to the west. You couldn't possibly imagine the horrible things I had to eat to survive. Coleslaw? Good heavens! Well, be seeing you. Yes, perhaps I can regale you with further tales of my tracking expertise. <laughs> Stupid tentacle. Hmm, looks like there's some kind of rodent down there. Looks comfortable. Nobody I know. It looks like a poodle I once knew. Hmm, how decorative. It's sunny out. It's a dented old can. There's a plaque here about it in commemoration of the Constitutional Convention interred by Thomas Jefferson, A.D. 1790. Run over by a plow, A.D. 1795. Sorry about the dents.
Hello, my silent gauze wrapped friend. I've got to get power to my chronogen. I guess I could wait for a lightning storm. I'm concerned about the human show. Where am I going to find a human to enter? Most of the humans are probably entered already. There's something else about the human show. Is it really moral? I mean lining people up and judging them like meat. There's something else about the human show. What do you think they do with the humans afterwards? Probably they just take them home. Do you think it's strange me talking to a mummy? I mean, you not being able to talk back and so forth. Actually, I kind of like that in a guy. My, those are nice clothes you're wearing. All that white really gets to me. I really should go now. Great Scott! You're purple! Uh, um... Yes? Well, don't you just look good enough to eat? What's that supposed to mean? You're not a human sympathizer, are you? Me? No way! Good, you had me worried. You know, I'm working on a way to get rid of the humans once and for all. So, what are you plotting? I'm building a shrinking ray, which I can use to shrink those pesky humans out of my sight for good. Tell me more about this shrinking ray of yours. I call it the Diminuator. The biggest problem left is to design a trigger that doesn't require fingers. Say, you look kind of familiar. Of course I do, Nitwit. I'm Purple Tentacle, renowned world conqueror. Are you the same purple tentacle who knew Dr. Fred? Up on your ancient history, are you? Yes, I remember that insignificant insect. If you will excuse me, I've got something in the oven. Anyone I know, eh? Hmm. Dinner for two at Club Tentacle. Dang, it says tentacles only. Ah. Ah. Thank you. 
Hi. 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 Well, that's the spirit. Everyone's raring to go. Let's get this show on the road. Ah, here it comes, my finest hour. Nice outfit. Don't bother. You'll just get beat like the rest of them. Oh, Harold, that's gross. What are you babbling about? You really should have told the judges if you weren't feeling well. Oh, ick. Now, how did that mess get in there? I think I'm going to be sick. Someone in here not feeling well? I was feeling fine until I saw that. Is that your regurgitation? No, I'm an healthy human. Didn't you just say you thought you were going to be sick? That's just a figure of speech. Do you realize you could have infected the whole show with human influenza? But I just got all my shots! You're a good-looking human, Harold, but you know the rules. You're out of the show. <laughs> what a mess. I hate cleaning up after humans. And so I said to her, that's not my suction cup. <laughs> you think that's funny? Listen to this. Hey, when are you guys going to judge best hair? Oh, all right. Wow, that's the best hair I've ever seen on a mummy. Thick and full and juicy. The mummy wins. Agreed. When are you guys going to judge best smile? Oh, all right. I like the quiet one with the big teeth. There's nothing in the rules about them being white. First place goes to the mummy. Agreed. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, 
Okay, who's got a joke? Hey, I just flew in from Baltimore, and boy are my suction cups tired. <laughs> oh, classic. It's amazing how the mummy can do that without moving his lips. I say we give him first place. Agreed. Well, that makes him best of show. Let's go congratulate him. He is very well preserved. I'll miss his laugh. It's time to give him his winnings and start packing up. We gotta get this whole show to Baltimore by Thursday. Yes, our work here is done. Well, Ted, this is where we <laughs> part ways. You've certainly helped save humanity. Even though you've been <laughs> dead for thousands of years, I think you're my <sniffs> favorite Edison. Tell me, Lieutenant, how do you really feel about humans? Honestly, sir, I think they're filthy, obscene, foul, sickening, like the stuff in your eyes when you wake up, like the wax that builds up behind your suction cups after a few days. Like That's enough, son. I just wanted to be sure you weren't one of those humanist sympathizers. What with this ridiculous human show going on here, there's humophiles everywhere. I'm no humophile, sir! That's good. Now, let me tell you about a little plan I have. This ought to be good. <laughs> Gee, I hope that's not lead-based paint. Well, what do we have here? Looks like a prosthetic rodent. Another specimen. Ooh. Say, cutie, what brings a hot tentacle babe like you to a dump like this? I'm, uh, here to see you, big boy. Really? Well, what are you doing for dinner? How about Club Tentacle? Hey, what am I saying? I can't afford to take out the trash, let alone a classy babe like you. <sighs> Don't you recognize me? Uh, no, I, uh... Hey, aren't you the waitress from Club Tentacle? I love that place! I'd be there right now if I weren't flat broke. I'm looking for a pet. Sorry, honey. You came to the wrong place. These three are problem humans. 
untrainable, disobedient, downright surly. He's just jealous because we've got opposable thumbs. Someday you will accept tentacles as your masters. Huh, you losers can't even ride tricycles. You see why no one wants him as pets? I'm looking for a pet. I told you, you don't want these humans as pets. And I don't want to be no pet, so... Nyeh. I'm here by accident. Bye. Hey, I don't want to be here either. Whoa! Dinner for two at Club Tentacle? I can't wait to tell my wife. You're free! Free to do what? Free to... to run wild through the woods like humans should. Big deal. I said you're free, now get off your fat lazy butts and start enjoying it. Enjoy being hunted for the rest of our lives by that mustached old tentacle with a big net? If we ran off, he'd be right on our trail. If we stay here, we know we'll be warm and comfortable. Outside, we'd be eating bugs and moss. You'll be eating my fist in a second. The woods are filled with wild animals, lions, tigers, and skunks. Man, I hate skunks. Hey, look, a skunk. <gasps> Here, you mangy humans! You can't do this! This is an escape proof facility! Who says you can't learn anything from cartoons, eh, kitty? Gosh, I hope this isn't like the primitive, dangerous microwave ovens of my century. Those things could really pop a hamster good. Uh-oh. That was fun, but only because this is the 22nd century. You see, kids who put hamsters in microwaves back where I'm from get taken away from their parents and put up for adoption. So don't do it. He still looks really cold. This ought to warm him up. Probably just the tentacles winter, uh, winter things.
not my type. What's this? Mm, help wanted, moronic drone, mm, assist genius, mm, yada yada yada. Well, I'm the only genius around. And you look dumb enough. Uh. So pick up your lab coat and get to work. Ah, excellent! I need that for my super battery. Ah, excellent! I need that for my super battery. It's sure quiet in here. I wonder if there might be any ideas worth discussing in the suggestion box. Maybe somebody should take a look. I say, lads, I have an idea. Does it have anything to, to do with starting a fire? No. I was thinking it's about time we open the suggestion box. Don't you agree? Sure, George, if you say so. Yes, whatever you think is fine with us. Excellent. What's he thinking? No one of any importance has been here all day. What could be in the suggestion box? Perhaps he intends to suggest something himself. Oh. Ah, here's a suggestion. It says, George says that every American should have a vacuum cleaner in their basement. What do you think, gentlemen? Mm, whatever you say, George. Your name's on it. I'm sure you must have a good reason for suggesting it. Yes. It's strange. I don't quite... Well, I'm sure I had a reason for it. If there are no objections, we shall add it to the Constitution immediately. No? Good, and so shall it be law. What's a vacuum cleaner? Excuse me. Yes? Mr. President, may I offer you an excellent smoke? Can you also provide me with a light? Sure. Well, in that case... Blast, I hate it when that happens. See if you can't find those for me, will you? There's a good lad.
Could you use these? Why, thank you, young man. Strange, I wonder if I should cut down on the coffee. Hey, Tom, look! The father of our nation is cold. Better build a fire. You're right. Huh? I guess you can have my log. Me? Why should I build the fire? You build the fire. I'm bothered by the smoke. You build the fire. I'm bothered by your attitude. You build the fire. No, you build the fire, Mr. Penmanship. No, you build the fire, log lover. No, you build the fire. No, you build the fire. You big baby. Can't talk. Busy making history. It looks kind of small for me. It looks kind of small for me. I got something good for you, mister. Uh, mister. Mr. Brainstorm? Yes, hand it over. Hmm. Doesn't this belong to somebody? Yeah, Red Edison. Ah! I'm sorry, but the man has no vision. A lightweight, durable fabric like this going to waste down in his basement. When I'm done with it, it will fly. Hmm! Eureka! The all-season Francocopter, ready to make history. No, there's no fuse. So, what do I light? For the last time, you're not going to light anything. You just push it. The whole time? How am I going to get up that high? Listen, just wait for me to say the word now. Then push the kite into the air, all right? I'm on you, lasagna. Let's hope so. Now! Whee! Look at her go! Now all we need is a little... Hey! So what happened after I fainted? Well, after the lightning hit the kite, it came crashing down on your head. The lightning? No, the kite. Drat! What do you think we should do? I'd like to go back to my lab and consider the situation. Sounds like something I would say. Ready for another brush with destiny? I'd rather mope around some more. I'll be waiting. Thank you. 
How about an amendment that the president has to be a human being? Please, this is serious business. You're right. Okay. Who was the idiot who started the fire? It looks pretty clear in here now. Say, did you get the pen on our way out? No, I... I found a blanket blocking the chimney. Son, do you know anything about a blanket? Uh, didn't the dude next to you have one earlier? Uh... Uh, hey, catch you later. Ah, the final element for my ingenious battery. Stand back, boy. Give me room to work. A miracle of modern science. It will look lovely here on the shelf until I take it with me to Baltimore. Don't look now, but the British are coming, dude. Eh? Where? Is that supposed to be funny? I'm very busy. Ready for another brush with destiny? Sure, why not? Splendid! Now! She's handling kind of funny. You got it. Just hang on there. She's too heavy. I can't control her. Hang on, Ben. Hang on. She's breaking up. She's breaking up. Run for your life. Now that was interesting. Yeah. Say, can I see that kite for a second? No, I'm taking it back to my lab in Philly right now so I can study the results. Wish me luck. I never got your name. It's Hoagie, sir. Nice working with you, Hoagie. I promise to name an invention after you someday. Gosh, thanks.
Look at that sucker go! He just keeps running and running and running. I heard something. Everything okay in there? Well, try and keep it down, okay? Nah, I'm not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> Oof! Dr. Fred, are you okay? Dr. Fred? I'd better get him to the lab. Well, I got him in here, but he's out cold. I got the contract for you to sign, Doctor. Sorry, I don't like to sign things that I haven't read. Oh, forget it. I'll get rid of Purple Tentacle myself. Oh, yeah? How? I'm getting Purple Tentacle declared insane and arrested. That's a good idea! But I need a note signed by a doctor. Oh! Hey, I'm a doctor! We're in luck! Well, good luck! Oh. 
It's some kind of legal mumbo jumbo. I doubt they'll take it without a stab. Yes, what do you want? Hi there, is this Dr. Fred Edison? Who did you think you called? Dr. Spock? Look, I don't have all day. This is Farley Crock at LucasArts Games. I just discovered your contract among some very old files, and, well, our lawyers say that we, uh, have to pay you two million dollars in back royalties. Uh, for the use of your family in the Maniac Mansion video game. What? This is Farley Crock. No, I heard that, you moron! When do I get my money? Oh, right now. It's been credited to your Swiss bank account. Operator, get me a travel agent! This is an emergency! I'd rather not. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-35327. Very good, sir. We'll send the diamond by Pronto Post Lightspeed Delivery immediately. Thank you for calling. Now that's service. I'd better get this to Dr. Fred right away. That should do it. Where did you get this diamond, anyway? Uh... It was donated by a group of Girl Scouts who were in the neighborhood. How heartwarming! According to my instruments, everything is in readiness. Your friends have activated their units, so it's time to throw the switch! Great! Hoagie! I'm so happy to... Hi! Laverne! Wow! I'm so glad you two made it back okay! I hate to interrupt, but there's no time to lose! Now that you're back, we've got to proceed with the original plan and send you back to yesterday to turn off the sludge matic Huh? Say what? Now hold on a minute, Dr. Fred. They just barely made it back to our time alive, and I think... <laughs> you can't turn off the machine if I get there first. Uh-oh. Don't worry, guys. This time I know I can stop him. Uh-oh. I guess we better do something. Let's go. No, wait! You can't all go in the same store! Didn't you see the fly? We're... We're... Or some kind of monster, dudes. Great. Stuck here the rest of my life listening to Bernard talking and watching Hoagie eat. 
Mom warned me there would be days like this. Now wait just a minute. It's Green Tentacle! It's Green Tentacle! What was that green? Green Tentacle behind you! What? I believe he's trying to warn you about me. Oh. We're going to turn off the sludge matic and defeat your evil plan, overgrown worm. You sorry lot are no match for me. But there's three of us. Well, sort of. Nevertheless, I mean to crush you. Yeah? You and what army? Why, this army, of course. Yikes. You see, I've been busy. These are all versions of myself from the future. I've been bringing them back here using the Chronojar. Together, we will conquer the world. You ten there. Go to the basement and guard the sludge -omatic. No one is to touch the sludge -omatic. Now, creature, I must decide what excruciating tortures to... Leave them to me. I've been itching for a chance to test out my newly completed diminuator. Uh-oh. Excuse me. Um, us. <laughs> All right, the rest of you come with me. Next stop, the world. What do we do now? Whoa! It wears off! Aha! Run for it! Damn! The battery must not have had time to recharge, but it will. Maybe he won't find us. You who, where are you, human? Uh-oh. Take that. <laughs> and this. Drat. Neat. Uh-oh, this looks like it might work. Hey! Where'd he go? This door appears to be locked. Hmm, this door appears to be locked.
we need to leave the contract in there so I can get it tomorrow and send it to Hoagie 200 years ago. Hmm, this door appears to be locked. Help wanted, lab assistant. Hardworking drone needed to assist genius with experiments. High school diploma not required. It's really dirty. Excuse us. What is it? Would you mind hopping out to get us some Chinese food? Nice try, but we're not budging. Now, buzz off. Excuse us. What is it? Look behind you, a three-headed monkey. The only three-headed monkey here is in front of us. Now, buzz off. Excuse us. What is it? Could you let us pull that lever over there? No chance. Now, buzz off. Great! Now we can turn off the machine and prevent all this tentacle mayhem from ever happening. Well, I'm certainly glad that's over with. Yeah, let's get out of here. Leaving so soon, we haven't had the chance to get to know one another. You humans are so small-minded. Ha 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 ha! Eek! Run all you like, you insignificant insect! Ha 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 ha! Just what is it you have against humans, anyway? Humans are our oppressors. They made us live in this horrible motel. They created us in ungainly forms, so we could not rise against them. Try walking around with your legs tied together and glue on your shoes. You'll see what I mean. So? You wouldn't understand. Let's discuss your hatred of humans further. What's to talk about? I detest the whole cackling, hand-wringing lot of you. I see. Soon the rest of the world will too. Let's discuss your hatred of humans further. What's to talk about? I detest the whole cackling, hand-wringing lot of you. But humans created the sludge o -matic which made you super-intelligent. Nonsense. I created that myself and sent it back through time. I knew Fred's mad scientist ego would make him use it. How's that for a paradox? 
Who? Fred? But there's only one of him. Right. Anyway, you can see why I detest humans. You're pretty handy with that ray gun. Center of the forehead every time. Would you like a demonstration? I bet you couldn't hit your own forehead. Nice try. Are you really a future version of Purple Tentacle? Who else would be brilliant enough to invent the Diminuator? Can you remember stuff that hasn't happened yet? Naturally. Could you give us some stock tips? Don't invest in shoes. <laughs> Do the sharks ever have a winning season? No, but the tentacles do. <laughs> do we manage to defeat you and save the world? Of course not. Bummer. Are you more or less intelligent than the purple tentacle from our time? The same, but I've had 200 years to think things over. <laughs> Let's discuss your hatred of humans further. What's to talk about? I detest the whole cackling, hand-wringing lot of you. Sounds like you just hate Dr. Fred. Hmm, I suppose you're right about that. I didn't start out hating all humans, just Dr. Fred. Why don't you zap Fred with the ray gun for a change? Hmm, perhaps that would be entertaining. Oh, drat. Uh, surely we can talk this out. Hmm. Talk? Surely. Okay, little fella, mail this to Siberia. Our work here is done. Now we can go home. Kiddies, it's been more fun than a jumpsuit full of weasels. Now kindly get your freakish hide out of my home. Please, Dr. Fred, you've got to get us out of this mess. We look terrible, and we can't buy clothes off the rack. I'm getting sort of used to it. Maybe we could go on the talk show circuit. Help us, Dr. Edison. You're our only hope. Oh, all right. Hmm. You're not exactly the sideshow attraction you imagined. You're just three complete goofballs stuck in one suit of clothes. Huh? 
Well, I'm glad that's taken care of. Looks like everything's back to normal. <laughs> <laughs>